Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. It's time to join the conversation. All right. Welcome to another episode of Hard Headed. I'm your host, Matt Amos. With me, as always, is Chet Sears and Troy Trussell. Today, we're going to hear what's on Chet's mind. Looking forward to that, I guess. And uh, <laughs> we have uh, Troy's going to bring us a good word. And our top three today is things that get you in the Christmas spirit. Ho, ho, ho. Huh? That was Santa Claus. Was it? <laughs> wasn't very convincing. I needed to be a little bit more jolly. Oh, sorry. Santa's jolly. Sorry. That was bad, Santa. It was. <laughs> All right. Uh, the day this podcast releases, and we're recording just a little bit early, is December 7th. Remember. Can you guys tell me what's important about December 7th? What event in American history happened on December 7th? you got to remember it. Remember December December seventh. Remember Pearl Harbor. Did you just Google that? No, but I saw the date and uh, just guessed. I just told you the date. Anyway, you, you the, didn't tell me the year. Pearl Harbor. What year was it? Nineteen forty-one. You Googled that. I just Googled December seventh, and okay. that's what came up. Anyway, was it forty-one? Yeah. According to Google. Yeah. According to history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what's on my mind? Life lessons that we could apply to ourselves from Pearl Harbor. Okay. The movie was terrible, by the way. TSA. I don't know what that is. Airplanes. You guys are really on one tonight i really i really appreciate that that was matt's attempt at a joke yeah <laughs> so uh number one the I, I don't know if you're going serious or, or what i'm just this is the legit okay like there were certain things that led up to pearl harbor that if the u.s would have done things differently it could have had a different outcome and so when you look into that from a historical perspective armchair quarterbacking what are some things that we may be missing currently. like our country did currently yeah, well, or in the future or in the past? This is, this, these are things that we need to watch out for. Okay. But in the context of Pearl Harbor. Oh, and you're going to tell us what they are. You're not going to give us the opportunity to chime in. You could chime in. Okay. I, I, nope. I would appreciate a discussion here, but oh, I right. imagine you did not. I figured you were just going to tell us. I mean, that's typically what you do. You get on here and you're just like, what's what's on my mind? Okay. What? I'll tell you. I, Troy, I, I don't mind your feedback during this segment. You got it, buddy. So <laughs> life lessons we can learn from the attack on Pearl Harbor, not just lessons that the, the government should have learned, but apply those to our lives. You will, you will see. The attack on Pearl Harbor taught us the unthinkable can happen. Yep. And we should always be prepared for any possible scenario, even if we think there's no apparent threat. Did we think there was no apparent th- threat? The U.S. was caught off guard by Japan's surprise attack, which resulted in a devastating loss of lives and a, a big chunk of our Navy. We can learn from this experience and be vigilant and proactive in protecting our interests and values. So what they... You said, you know, you asked, didn't they know that they ignored a lot of things? So okay. a radio communication intelligence revealed the location and force of the, of the structure of the Japanese Navy, but they lost track of the characters and uh, of the, uh, the carriers in November. So they knew the whole Navy was out and they were tracking them and then lost track and just kind of let that go and didn't heighten their preparedness based on the fact that they don't know where the carrier group went. Then the, uh, a quote winds message was intercepted and decoded by Americans listening to a post on December 4th. That message was through to, from a Japanese to the Japanese instructed the diplomats to destroy their codes and documents in case of a, a rupture of dip, diplomatic relations with us, Britain and the Soviet union. So they destroyed anything that could, um, 
out of anticipation that the relationship was about to be over, they destroyed all of their codes and all the information that they had. And we were aware of that. We cracked that communication where they said, you need to get rid of everything. That's protocol, right? If you're compromised, you burn every, all the evidence, burn everything so it can't be used against you, all the intelligence you may have. Intercepted uh, uh, sure. December 6th Japanese <laughs> message that asked about uh, birthing positions in Pearl Harbor. They, they were, Japanese were talking back and forth. Actually, there were people, spies on the island that were keeping track of where the ships were parked. So they knew exactly where to come in and hit which battleships. And they had a, the same uh, the same day, they had a, a radar sighting, sighting of the airplanes headed towards Oahu, but they dismissed it, said that it must be American planes, and they didn't call ahead and warn anybody to be ready. Mm. Now, what we, how we could apply this is not necessarily intercepting radio communications, but to know there may be some looming... Uh, unthinkable thing that could happen in our lives with a loved one or whatever else. And there are signs that are out there that you're just not paying attention to because you don't want to. And if you, after the event, you look back and you're like, oh yeah, this, 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 this led up to that, but I didn't see it because I wasn't paying attention. So a life lesson, pay attention to that kind of stuff. Don't ignore it thinking that the unthinkable can't happen here. You okay, Matt? I'm good. You, you tracking with me? I am. I'm, I'm asking for input. Do you have any input you want to give? Not yet. Go ahead. Maybe the last time I'm I actually asked. I'm actually looking up. Some All right. Stuff for the number two, the attack on <laughs> Pearl Harbor showed us the importance of resource utilization and intelligence ga intelligence gathering. Some U.S. officials had prior knowledge of Pearl Harbor as a potential target, but they failed to act on it or communicate it effectively. Moreover. The Japanese spy was able to infiltrate the local community and gather information for the attack. We should learn from this mistake and use our resources wisely and efficiently and share relevant information with our allies and parents. So don't keep everything to yourself. Even if you think it may not be a big deal, you should be communicating certain things to your loved ones and trusted people so that they could gather all of that information and develop something that more of reality than what you think it may be and prevent things from going sideways. Um, in this case, they got a coded cablegram from the U.S. ambassador to Japan um, on January 27th, 1941. So in January, that reported that there was a Japanese plan on a surprise mass attack on Pearl Harbor. So they actually intercepted communications in January that the Japanese were planning something with Pearl Harbor. 11 and it, months before. And if you attack. knew that and then you ignored all this other stuff that was going on, well, they ignored it because they didn't know about the other cable. They didn't know about that communication. They didn't communicate. They didn't share information with other people that care. Mm. Anyway, um, there was also a war warning message that was sent from Washington to all army and Navy commanders in Hawaii at the end of November indicating that an imminent outbreak of war with Japan was going to happen. So there was, there was some knowledge, but they weren't sharing all the details. Should have been sharing some details because something bad was about to happen. So life lesson, we'll keep all the stuff that you know to yourself, share it with your trusted people. That. What? Or were you going to say something, Matt? There, 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 was something? A, there was a huge issue today in our current government. Yes. Where they don't like to talk. They don't talk to each other. They, uh, I was watching something that, uh, uh, on, uh, the, uh, the mob, uh, Gotti, John Gotti. Mm -hmm. Um, there was a new documentary that came out on Netflix. Um, and three different, uh, government entities were going after him, but n n none would talk to each other because all wanted credit for, for getting the guy instead of working together to get the guy it stupid and we we see it with cia all your three letter agencies that don't want to talk to each other no. don't want to communicate back and forth and they all, they then all you, want then, credit. Then, yeah yeah they all want to tell you number three the attack on pearl harbor demonstrated the power of unity and resilience after the attack the u.s rallied together to join the war effort and fight against the axis powers the attack 
on that day also inspired many acts of heroism and sacrifice. There were 15 medals of honor awarded from actions on December 7th in Pearl Harbor. Little known, little talked about. And it's widely known, little talked about. There were other locations attacked on December 7th by Japan. One of them was uh, Midway. We had uh, we had some Marines uh, on on Midway, an island, an atoll off of Midway, like a little island off of Midway, and uh, there's, so 16. There was a, a Marine um, that was awarded the Medal of Honor that same day with his bravery on the attack that happened there. They also attacked the Hong Kong and a few other locations um, that weren't U.S. based on that day. But when that attack happened, immediately brave people responded in such a way to save hundreds of lives. Just there are 2,500 lives lost in Pearl Harbor. And some of uh, 10 of the 15 were people that gave their life uh, in extreme valor and on that day, uh, piloting ships to get them away from other ships. And they stayed in there on the bridge, even though they knew it was going to sink or blow up or got bombed while they were trying to do it. Um, Another guy stood in a doorway and held a light uh, trying to get uh, get people out to come where they could escape, and he was the last one there, and he didn't make it out. Like just things that um, – heroism. So uh, life lesson, rally the troops when something goes wrong. Get, get brave men, get brave people around you, and go deal with it. Don't run from it. Uh, stand up and, and, and go deal with it. Number four. Um, the attack on Pearl Harbor revealed the dangers of infamy and revenge. Uh, you know, the, the, the day that lives in infamy, you know, was the, the line in the speech that uh, Roosevelt gave. And we declared war on Japan the next day. The re- also, the U.S. response was to take all of our U.S. citizens of Japanese descent and put them in prison camps. Internment camps is what they were called. So... Um, we don't need to learn. We need to learn from this and not react in a way to punish other people out of fear from what something somebody else has done. So just because you come from Japanese descent does not mean that you are pro the attack on Pearl Harbor or pro war with the U.S. But we completely violated civil rights and jailed people because of their ethnicity and totally inappropriate and we didn't admit that as a government until the 80s <laughs> and we actually years. repaid wow. uh gave reparations to every person that was there 20 20 000 bucks but it was in the 80s and this happened in 1941 so um just a horrible way to react wow. so unlike point number three get brave people and do the right thing um number four don't make it worse than it is and just attack everybody that even people that you're just scared of that you don't have any evidence that don't don't be that guy like don't don't go after oh every everybody like that let's put them in in prison to protect ourselves uh so don't overcorrect um with that so just ridiculous amount of people they were all over I, i i've been through one of the places that held them um, there were just houses, the like wooden structures is in Arkansas, but I mean, they, they, a lot of California, a lot of West coast, Arizona, and then some in Arkansas. And then anybody who had a record basically. So if you were Japanese from Japanese descent and had had some kind of criminal criminal record at some point, they'd actually put you in Leavenworth instead of one of these camps. So, oh wow, they, uh, it was, it was crazy. <clears throat> Yeah, you can't do that. That reminds me, did you see the Karate Kid, the new one, with the little Will Smith's kid? Yeah. That scene in the very beginning where he's flying to China. I don't remember the, that. The, much much like the Red Dawn, I, uh, I'm not a fan of the remake. Right. Yeah, me either. But he's sitting there in the plane, and the, they're talking Chinese. And he looks over at this Chinese guy like, do you know what she said? And he goes, don't look at me, man. I'm from L.A. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Because he just, he's like, yeah. oh, you must be Chinese. Tell me what she said. No. Nope. Totally not that. Yeah. That reminded me of that. Okay. The, uh, maybe some relevance here. Yeah. The executive order that Roosevelt gave to imprison these people, executive order 
66 9066 oh yeah might have been where old george lucas took that from never know never know anyway that's what's been on my mind pearl harbor what can we learn from it and troy you got anything else i don't really want to hear what matt has to say no i'm, I'm good that's uh that's some good stuff good good reporting there it's good to remember uh dates like that in our history because you know history is getting rewritten every school year so, that's right you know matt you got anything I, I, I would appreciate your input nope dude you're just being cold now <laughs> your show nope nope uh, I was going to say, uh, so the one thing that I was looking up, uh, you know, the uh, it was just kind of funny because I, I came across, we're talking, you know, Japan, the whole thing. And uh, then you then you brought up the Marines uh, or the Marine on Midway. And, uh, do you know, the Japanese said that it would take one million men 100 years to take Tarawa. That's how confident they were. And Marines did it. 18,000 Marines did it in 76 hours. <laughs> I just, I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> I, I, I read that quote the other day because I, I, I guess I hadn't even seen that, one. seen that one before, but it would take... It'd take a million men, a hundred years to take this island, and yeah. whoop, eighteen thousand. Oh, overconfidence, three days. <laughs> yeah. uh, but that's a lesson that we could take away too. Um, Just because you think it's impossible doesn't mean it is. Yeah, I, be humble. Yeah, especially when the Marine Corps is after you, or any other people for that matter. I mean, we're we got our hands tied right now. We can't do anything. But yeah, you know, tough times. Maybe we can learn from that. Yeah. Because it's coming back around. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Chet. Remember, December 7th. 1941. 1941, which I I was going to say 42 to start the show, but that's that was when we declared. That's when we got in it in Europe. Yeah. But. Actually, um, Germany... And Italy declared war on us on December 11th because we declared war on Japan. And then they declared war on us, and then we went after them. Then started fighting in 1942. Crazy. Now you know. The more you know. Now we need a little star with the... Dun, 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 dun. All right. When we come back. Uh, it's going to be top three things that uh, get you in the Christmas spirit. Are you driving traffic to your website? Do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested in creating a video for your homepage today, trusselmedia.com. Fill out the form at trusselmedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. Oh, and we're back <laughs> with our top three things to get you in the Christmas spirit. Troy, yo, what gets you in the Christmas spirit? Number three, music and TV. Mm. So usually around our house, it gets earlier every year, which upsets me. <laughs> I was getting ready to ask. So is this uh, is this July? Usually it's October. Uh, you start getting yeah. So usually it's Black Friday that day, uh, and Black Friday I've always for the past few years. You all right? Oh yeah. Okay. okay. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> past few years I've started watching a Christmas story on Black Friday. Never been a fan. I love that movie, but because Hannah always goes Tie, shopping. Tiebreaker, Matt. What's your opinion of the Christmas story? I don't know that I've seen it. There you go. Well, it's nostalgic for me, and I love it. That's fine. Fantastic. You can like it. Man. Um, Is that the one with little Timmy? No, that's uh, or Jimmy. That's a Christmas Carol. Yeah. Uh, what's the What's a Christmas story? The tongue on the on the pole, the metal pole. Yeah. The Red Ryder Ralphie. BB gun. Ralphie wants a yeah. Red Ryder BB gun. 
the obnoxiously narrate, narrated movie? No, we're good. No, okay. it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but I, I usually watch that, and then the Hallmark movies start coming out. Mm-hmm. Hannah it watches all those. Well, it's gotten earlier. It's like November hits, and here come the. So you've been in the Christmas spirit since November. Since November first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's been great. All right. Music comes on. Yeah, all that. Okay. Anyway, uh, number two, when the weather changes from fall to winter, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and this year it came on pretty, pretty thick, pretty suddenly. Yes. So uh, that always kind of gets me in the spirit of Christmas. And then number one, the the true spirit is uh, Advent. Always gets me in the gets me in the spirit. We've done the churches I've been a part of. It always does an Advent. Um, and we do different things, different ones at the house. Uh, like with chocolates and whatnot? Yeah. Uh, we've done some with chocolates. The- we've done – one year we just did something every night as a family. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, we've done that a couple of years and just kind of made it like this ritualistic thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but always having something to to kind of point us to Christ and yeah and the true meaning of Christmas. So so yeah, that's top three things that kind of get me in the spirit. Good deal. Go ahead, Chet. Oh, wow, thank thank you, Matt. You're welcome. I will go now. <laughs> All right. No number three, classic Christmas music. So not Mariah Carey. Not Mariah Carey. Technically, but, Britney Spears' Christmas music probably be classic. No, it's not. Does she even sing Christmas music? Oh yeah, you know she's got a Christmas album. Oh yeah, I don't know. You know it. It's yeah. gotta. It's gotta be she's out there. Got one. I don't. I'm talking Bing Crosby. I'm talking well, you know, like you know how they play classic rock music in some of the uh, grocery stores now. I know Matt doesn't know this, but okay, uh, you know you're old when you hear like Nirvana. <laughs> They're not playing that on classic rock stations, dude. I've heard it. Yeah, they are. Classic rock is a genre all its own. No, oh, I know it doesn't move. They, no. No. I'm no. declaring it doesn't it, move. Well, if, I would agree with you. Well, we're right. Yes. But Everybody else is making mistakes. That's right. They're playing. That's alternative nine, rock. I know. They're it's playing not that rock. on classical rock don't stations. Believe it. I don't believe it. It's, it's That's true. why I don't listen to the radio. I don't either. That's no. why I said department stores. Number two. Are they called department stores anymore? Still Number two. Same satellite people. <laughs> Idiots. Stupid. Um, the house being decorated. Gets me in a Christmas spirit. Walking, oh, yeah, walking a into a Christmas tree, decorated in your house. Mm. Like, oh, I'm in the Christmas spirit now. It's good. Or the mantle, the stockings hung from the mantle with care. When do your lights go on your house? Because I know you all get that done. So we're not doing it this year, but they would put them up as early as October because they got a schedule to maintain. Right. Gotcha. So, but then you technically shouldn't turn them on until after Thanksgiving, but... Hey, man, if the lights are up, you turn them on. That's the way I see things. Yeah, we had some neighbors down the street got theirs up before November and October. Yeah. And yeah, they have somebody do it. So. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you get bad weather, let's just say, oh, I'm going to wait till after Thanksgiving to put them up. Snowstorm comes. You're not putting them up or you're going to risk your life doing it. And it's not <laughs> worth it. So you do it with the good weather. Same as taking them down. Number one, Thanksgiving. I kind of hold back on all the Christmas spirit things until after Thanksgiving. So there's nothing more that puts me in the Christmas spirit than Thanksgiving coming. And you know it's Christmas downhill from here. Yeah, that's a good one. I would agree with, with that. Thank you. With that one. I went a little bit of a different route, though. Okay. Uh, my number three is deer hunting and deer season. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Which is always just right after Thanksgiving anyway. Yeah. Um, because that's like the start of, to me, the, the, that's the start of the holiday season. Yeah. <laughs> Deer holiday. Taking off of work. You're getting ready. Well, you, I mean, you already came back. Yes. So I'm getting, I'm, I'm going, we're on the 7th, so I'm getting ready to go. Look at you. Maybe. Good luck for you. Spores and all. You know, <laughs> yeah. Black just, spores and we're all. We're just going to go. No matter what. But uh, yeah, sitting in deer camp, you know, and, and a lot of times uh, you're sitting in the stand starts to snow a little bit of course we've already had the snow um so far this year but you know sitting there in that stand and gets cold and got your coffee steaming up the windows on the blind and just put you in the holiday spirit (laughs) it's nothing like it sleigh bells ringing Uh, that kind of goes with number two colder weather and uh 
when you walk outside and you smell the chimneys going, whether there's snow on the ground or not, but you walk outside and you smell the smoke and, you know, people got their chimneys going and it's like, oh, it's that time of year. I'm a fan of uh, fireplace. Yeah. I, I am too. I wish I had one. And then uh, number one, as weird as it may seem, now we're making deer jerky and watching Monk. And I don't know why, but there must have been one Christmas when I was still on narcotics from my injury. <laughs> but we made deer jerky and uh, Monk was going in the background, you know, as we're spending time as, you know, me and the kids go, you know, doing the marinade and yeah. cutting and doing all that kind of stuff and then drying it. And, you know, then I got a picture of uh, my girls when they were little with the bag of jerky that we'd finished and their little outfits by the Christmas tree. And I don't know, it just kind of puts me in the Christmas Christmas yeah. spirit. Okay. That's my number one. Good for you. Nice. Monk. If you watch Monk in like April, do you think about Christmas? Yes, actually I do. It's kind of weird. That is weird. But uh, anyway, so that's my top three. Uh, Troy, why don't you go ahead and close us out with a good word? Yeah, so uh, the good word is read. It's fundamental. It's a fundamental thing in life, reading. Um, so recently, I, I've struggled to do that, struggled to read. Uh, Audible has been a thing in my life that's helped me do that a lot with different books and stuff. Um, but for me, reading the Bible, uh, is, is a good thing. I mean, it's, it's needed in life and I've struggled with that lately. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm reminded of Hebrews four twelve, which is for the word of God is living and active sharper than any two edged sword pier piercing to the division of soul and of spirit of joints and marrow and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And the part where the word of God, where it says the word of God is living and active, um, is true. And it's always, that part of that verse has always been, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's kind of been, it's miraculous, right? Because how can text be living and active? Um, but the Bible is. And one day you can read a story that can mean something with what you're going through in your life at that time. And you read it five years later, it can mean something totally different. Or you read a passage for kind of your whole life and you glance over a few things and then it's revealed to you, you know, years later, like, Oh, I always thought about this passage meant this, but now I'm seeing that it, that it means this, you know, and there's the Bible is just full of things like that. And it's, it, yeah, and, I would, uh, and I know what you're saying. I would caution you to say it means something different. It means it doesn't change its meaning. As well, in, right. You can't yeah, read yeah. it and it say, well, God is love. And like, oh, I'm reading that. And it means something different that he's not love anymore. But it, it applies your, your life application of that scripture. You're, you're in a different place in life. So it applies to your life in a different way. Right. Um, or even you just didn't get it the first time. It, we, we talked uh, last week about going through Jacob, uh, read, reading about Jacob. And there's some stuff I never caught. Uh, I, I learned about Jacob back in the vacation Bible school days when they were using the felt characters on the, you know, the board and talked about all this stuff. And, and then I go back and read it in depth and I'm like, Oh, I didn't, I didn't pick that up. And through all my previous times I've read through this, you know, so it's not, it didn't change. Right. But it, it's living like it's, it's yeah. There's still more to be taken from it. Uh, every time you go back to it. Yeah. And I'm reminded of like when you talked about how the, Jesus spoke violently. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. That was something that I'd never taken from, from his teaching. Yeah. And Paul, Paul, you know, talking about cutting it off and yeah, just, yeah. Ah! yeah that's just yeah. another thing. Like we've read that so many times right. in our life and then you bring it up as it's really violent and like, Oh yeah, it, it really is. So yeah. Yeah. Things like that in the Bible. And when I get off on, on reading it uh, and, Another thing I've been struggling with lately, or not struggling with, I've been struggling with reading it and setting aside time. Like, I really need to get back to doing that. But um, totally forgot where I was going with that. Matt will pick you up. Lost it. <laughs> I'm not picking you up. Uh, anyway, uh, that's just where I've been struggling lately. And, yeah, I need to get back on it because it is living and active. And the more you read it, the more... You grow. You can grow closer to the Lord. I, of all the stuff that you do, reading the Bible is the one of them that you, after you having you having 
you have have <laughs> after you're having done it. I have a problem with after, talking. After you have a problem with reading. Him. I have a problem with talking. It's that pizza. Man. After having read the Bible, <laughs> you don't go back and regret it. You you don't finish with your quiet time and say, "Man, I just wasted that time." You never yeah. do. Right. Never. And there's a lot of stuff. You know, whether it's you're watching some stupid TV program or playing some stupid game on your phone. I'm yeah. looking at me. I do. I do that. Yeah. I and you're like, that. man, I just wasted that amount of time, or I should have done this. Never feel that way after reading the Bible. Yeah. It's valuable. Oh, I remember what I was going to say. But sometimes we always expect like this huge revelation and this huge miracle, miracle to take place each time we sit down and read it. I mean, that can be a trap that you can get put into. So I would just say that's that's not going to happen every time. Will it happen sometimes? But yeah. That's like, uh, that's like going to the gym and you don't walk away from the gym with bigger biceps. Exactly. But over time. You keep going. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the crock pot, baby. Not the microwave. Yeah, that's that's like the T-shirt says. Yeah, it's like the crock pot, baby. Yeah, don't smoke my meat. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming away with gains. Yes, awesome. All right. Yeah, that's all I got. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.